Chapter 19 Bahrain, Safe Hands, Act 2 Arriving from Thailand, Ferthy and I regain consciousness as the plane makes its final descent. The 600 still angry eyes follow us off the aircraft. There's just no pleasing some people, I tell Ferthy. As soon as we enter the airport, I feel a sense of paranoia. Every CCTV camera has swiveled and is pointing at me accusatorily. I knew Colonel Jones was behind those controls, growling ominously. We would be displayed on a large monitor with a big red target on both of our foreheads. The colonel had been following my moves around different airports ever since that incident with the shorts. Jack's goal? To forewarn his security mates, keep mankind safe. It was a bit tricky for the colonel and his global team of elites, as I had two passports, British and Australian. So in the old days, with old technology, I could leave one country on one and enter the next country with the other, with no one any the wiser. Handy if I needed to disappear. Jack Jones had really taken that aviator Top Gun jibe so personally, I mused, looking up at his cameras. I was annoyed. He had bloody looked like Maverick's dad. We jump in a taxi, knowing my parents would forget to pick us up. Head to Dad's headquarters, the British club sports bar. Meet up with Mum and Dad. What are you doing here, Brian? What do you mean, dearest parents? Ferthy and my good self are over for a few weeks. Show him the sights and behave, generally, behave ourselves. Remember? A few moments' silence. A quick sip of their pints of gin. Oh, of course, son. Fancy a few coldies? Too bloody right, we're parched. A couple of days later, Dand has turned up too, unannounced. Taxi from the airport to the Brit Club bar later, we catch up. Ivan's, asterisk, in town too, says Dan, one of his good mates and a certifiable lunatic. Ivan had a guest membership courtesy of Her Majesty's prison service. You could never tell whether he was on parole or not. This time he was and had escaped to Bahrain. Excellent. Give him a phone. Let's hit the town. Ivan on the phone. Yes, I've borrowed my mum's car. Come pick you boys up. Ivan arrives in his bright pink mother's Avon lady car. Fuck off, Ivan. We're never going to get laid with that day glow piece of shit. Shut up. I got it to 112 miles per hour on the way here. Look, I took a photo of the Speedo. Sure enough, the pink crap mobile did indeed have an engine. Ivan, this is Furthy, my Aussie mate. Intro's over. Right, where we going? Let's hit that dodgy Filipino bar in the old souk. Cheap drinks. Even cheaper dates, no doubt. We all agreed. Sounds delightful. Let's go. Ivan handbrake turns into the parking place at 40 miles an hour. What speed did you reach that time? Looks at the camera. 123. We leave the smoking Avon lady car and head into the bar slash club. There's a Filipino band in the corner. The rest of the audience are Arabs. Proper dodge, just as Ivan had promised. Ferthy and Dan grab a table. Ivan and myself at the bar counter when he tells me, let's have some fun with your mate. You know, proper introduction to Bahrain. I know. What are you thinking? Let's spike his drinks. Looks at the top shelf. Every drink we buy him, we'll work our way along that shelf. See how far he can go. Ivan, you truly are a son only a mother could love. Ivan, the big scouser with broken nose, replies. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Better let Dan in on it too. We agreed. Right. Firthy starts on Bacardi and Coke, plus 100 proof tequila. We're going to cover the globe's finest alcoholic beverages. Think of it as wine tasting with a twist of meths. Furthy, blissfully unaware of the World Alcohol Tasting Championship that we had organised, gets stuck in. About two hours in, and nearly halfway through the top shelf, we drag Furthy away from the 40 dancing Arabic men. Wow, super friendly, these Bahraini men, he exclaims delightedly. We all throw each other a sharp look and roll our eyes. I would explain later to Furthy how friendly they could get if you weren't on your fucking guard. 
Two-thirds of the shelf consumed. Furthy, at seventeen stone and six foot two, is dancing on the table. Fuck, I say to Dan. If he swings off that chandelier, the whole roof will come down. It's too bloody late now. We have created a monster. Next thing, Furthy jumps off the table and rushes the Filipino band. The four-foot-three group scatters all high heels and eyelashes, screaming in every direction. Big Furthy, come here, I just want to give you a big Aussie hug and say good day. it's my first week in Bahrain. Security, huddled in a corner, terrified, starts to become brave as one of the Filipino band members goes over to scold them. Pointing at us angrily and getting even more hysterical, time to leave. We rescue Furthy from the microphone as he starts to sing, I come from a land down under, and make a run for it. The four of us are at the top of solid marble stairs. Furthy suddenly trips and rolls down over and over again down the forty-odd steps, lies in a crumpled heap at the bottom. We look at each other. Fuck, I think we've killed him. I knew he was dead. Me, when Chris, his mother, finds out. Safe hands and all. I would have to use those two passports to go into hiding again. Suddenly... Furthy springs back onto his feet. We look at each other. No fucking way. He looks back up the stairs and yells, Where's the party at, bastards? Trips over the lip of the door, falls backwards, and crushes a four-foot Filipino flat 